So we're back for another business style video. The last one went incredibly, incredibly well, and that was all around starting a business. And this time we're gonna talk about hiring staff, building teams, and then taking that leap from being a lifestyle business and turning it into a more autonomous business in the same way that Gymshark is. It's very easy to believe your own hype and think that you can do anything right. That was a, a little bit of a reality check for me where I sort of had to check my ego and go, you know, leave them to it. Genuinely, if you want to grow your business, that is the most important thing that you can possibly do. So when you're hiring people, you have to be making sure that these things are dead on right. So you have to learn to trust people to do things. Things will go wrong. Inevitably, things will go wrong and it's incredibly, incredibly tough. So last year I recorded a video that was all around essentially my top tips for starting your own business and I was completely overwhelmed and quite frankly quite shocked with just how well received it was. So what we're recording today is the next part of that video. So three main things that I'm going to cover today. Number one, hiring staff. Number two, building teams. And number three, making that transition from being a lifestyle business into a proper business. So number one, hiring staff. For me, this is one of the most fundamental and important parts of growing your business. The reason why, if you don't build your team and hire people that are better than what you are, then inevitably you will either fail or you will be limited by your own time and skill set, which inevitably will mean the business will not grow particularly big. Hiring staff was like, looking back, was an incredibly tough thing for me at the time. So being honest, I was definitely, which I think a lot of people that start a business are, will be definitely have a lot of self-confidence verging on arrogance. I was definitely there. I'm glad to say since I've learned and I've sort of managed to control my ego somewhat more and I constantly work on that and try and be the best that I possibly can. And it's very easy to believe your own hype and think that you can do anything right. Now, I worked very closely in sort of the tech and the IT side of the business as well as the brand and the product. There was this one thing that I did and it was linking Shopify to, at the time, the uh, Royal Mail system. It was really basic and it wasn't very good, but it, was wor it worked and it was my thing and it was something that I was really proud of. We hired a guy called Chris Perrins, who is now our CTO, who is incredibly talented and much more talented in uh, this side of the business and on tech and ops and that sort of thing, much more talented than what I am. Now he came in and he essentially took that system and he just sort of like chucked it in the bin and just made a significantly better version. And I remember sort of watching him do that and I, it felt like my heart was breaking because of this thing that I'd made that I was really proud of and you know, it worked, it was great. It wasn't massively scalable, but it worked. Just to watch him come in and just sort of chuck it away and say it wasn't good enough and build something better. Yeah. That was a, a little bit of a reality check for me where I sort of had to check my ego and go, you know, leave them to it. So anyone that is initially hiring teams or hiring um, staff into their team or into their business, you will inevitably feel that, but that is the right thing to do. A lot of people will say, you need to try and make yourself redundant. Genuinely, if you want to grow your business, that is the most important thing that you can possibly do. You need to hire great people. Now, when I'm talking about great people, that doesn't mean go off to a university and say, I want the top 1% in the class, right? That could come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. That could be from a trust element. It could be from a care element. It could be from a talent element. But something that we've learned here at Gymshark is it's not that difficult to find talented people. To find talented people that are humble and that care and really truly believe in the vision of the company, that is really, really tough. And so when you're hiring people, you have to be making sure that these things are dead on right. So they have to be better than you at what they're doing. They have to be culturally right for the business. They have to be humble and they have to be buying into the long-term vision of the business. Like I said, you can have the most talented person, the most humble person, you know, the person that's culturally right, but if they just don't get the long-term vision of the brand, then at some point it's not going to work. The other thing, the other point I'll just quickly touch on whilst I'm on this subject is one bad apple, one sort of what we call in the business in a Gymshark a culture fucker, one of those people can absolutely like genuinely damage a team so, so terribly. And, and we've had that in the past and we've had to deal with it really, really quickly. So one of the sayings that we work with here at Gymshark is hire slow, but fire fast. And that doesn't mean that we're, you know, a culture of, we, you know, our staff turnover is low. We don't let people go very often because we want to make the right hiring decisions at the start. But if you get the wrong person, you need to make that decision very quickly. You know, keep it amicable, have the conversation, be very open and honest with them. But you have to make sure that you've got the right people in the business or the the right, the right people on the bus, as it were. You need to make sure that the team that you are working with is completely aligned and they fit all four of those sort of tick boxes that I uh, outlined earlier. That should be a great start in terms of you 
starting to build out your business. And, and it'll be a snowball effect, right? If you get one really good hire, it, it, will, it will affect and it will benefit your business so much that from there, it's just a snowball effect. It'll get better and better and better. You'll get more confident doing it and you'll see the benefits. And you know, I guess the benefits will show in the business's performance as well. Next thing will be around building teams and like its own, it's, a, it's very similar to the last point, but what I'm talking about here is, so as we started to hire staff into Gymshark, we, we split it in two distinct areas, and front end of the business and back end of the business. From the front end of the business, that's the obvious stuff, that's the sponsorship, that's the marketing, that's the branding, um, that's the product, that's all that sort of thing. That is, I guess it's the things that, that as a customer you will sort of see, hear and touch. On the back end of the business, and this is where I focused on the hiring in the early days of Gymshark because I was really, really poor at this side of things. At the back end of the business, you had operations, you had logistics, you had finance, you had things like that. And you had sort of the back end elements of product as well in there, such as buy-in and so on. And I remember at this stage thinking, I remember at school, you'd look at sort of hierarchies and things like that. And I think, oh God, is this getting a bit corporate all of a sudden? This is really, really, really important that you understand the structure of your business and the best structure, uh, the structure that makes the most sense for your business. When I look at, and when I, I do a lot of talks at sort of business conferences and I do a lot of Q and A's and things like that, and a lot of people ask me around sort of the USP of Gymshark and what makes Gymshark really special. And obviously they look at maybe sort of our sponsorship, a lot of the things that we do in terms of marketing, the branding, the events, all that sort of stuff. But not many of them ask questions around the hierarchy and the structure and, and particularly our sort of direct to consumer model. That is so, so, so important. And the way that we built the business, and albeit I won't be publicizing the hierarchies and the way that we structure the business, but it's such a huge USP and it's something that's so, so vital because we've got an incredible level of fluidity in our business and in our structure. And we've got an incredible method or an incredible way of making decisions really, really quickly. We get information up through the structure of the business really, really quickly. We make decisions really, really quickly. And that allows us you know, to action, implement, and you know, I guess see the rewards of those decisions super, super fast. And that's something that's been really, really important to us since day one. And again, this is something that you need to be thinking about. You need to really carefully think about as you're building teams, how do these teams work? So beginning simple split for us in our particular business was front end and back end. At that point, then we started to dig a little bit deeper. So on the front end, we're like, okay, we're gonna have we're like a marketing team maybe, we have a bit of branding over here, creative is gonna come in. And you start to build distinct, distinct teams. And again, on the back end, you'll have finance teams, logistics teams, ops, and so on. You need to sort of understand these areas. And again, you need great, great leaders in each area. Each leader in their area, um, in each team, should be, again, substantially better than what you are. And then you should be able to ha take that backseat approach, albeit very involved. So personally, I'll, I will take a backseat approach in terms of the way I manage the marketing team at the moment. I'm not massively in the day-to-day. -day. However, I will sort of try and work on my skill set. So if I do need to jump in, then I can. But yeah, build, you need to build great teams and you need to completely understand the structure of the business, how it works, and I guess how it, how it adapts and how it changes as you continue to grow as well, because that's important. That's a mistake that we made at the start. We'd, we'd build a structure, we'd I mean, stand in front of everyone and we'd say, this is the gym shot structure now for the next two or three years. And like three or four months down the line, we'd be like, okay, now this is the new structure. And people started saying, well, you know, three or four months ago, you said this would be the structure for two years and now you're changing it again. I think that's also quite important as you are building teams, particularly if you're working in a fast growing business, you need to have that open sort of dialogue and you need to say, this is what we think works now. We might change on it. And by the way, regardless, even if we are right, as the business grows or as we adapt, this might change. So yeah, and it's also about understanding the different types of people that work across the business, right? You know, in the front end, you might have a slightly different type of ind individual in terms of their skill set than in the back end. And it's about just understanding that, maybe flexing your style as you're working with different types of people or different individuals, and being as completely open, transparent, and honest as possible with everyone across the business. So these two things combined amongst other things will help you to transition from being a lifestyle business into more of what I'd call like a proper business for lack of a better word. Just so that everyone's aware as well, a lifestyle business is sort of like generally one person, maybe three or four. It's built in a way where the business will probably make decent profit and the I guess the leaders would literally just live off that profit. As you hire more people and then you build a bigger team, obviously you're going to be eating away at that profit and which is why I'm why I talk about it being a, a, a transition and it's and it's a transition that I think you need to be really clear with yourself that you want to make. There is nothing wrong with running a great lifestyle business and living a great life with it. Transitioning into a larger size business with a bunch of staff, um, with lots of teams and many offices and so on, that comes with, you know, albeit a lot of positives. It's great opportunity for growth. Like I find it personally, I find it massively fulfilling because I get to be around incredible people every single day. 
but it also comes with a lot more risk it comes with a lot more stress it's very tough it's very difficult the hours are long and obviously generally you'll find the profits will come down because you've got a higher cost base in the business it's it's a transition that i think you need to think long and hard about before you decide to make it now assuming that you do want to take that leap and move into a, a larger size business you need to be aware that as you're bringing in systems as you're bringing in offices as you're bringing in people and so on things will go wrong inevitably things will go wrong and it's incredibly incredibly tough i think the other thing that in terms of transitioning into, into a larger business I learned was you have to learn to trust. You have to learn to trust people to do things. You can't constantly be sort of like looking over their shoulder and making sure that they're doing an all right job. You have to trust people to do a good job and then, you know, obviously they'll bring it back to you and you can have a look at it when it's done. So to give you a tangible example, in, in my from my uh, point of view, from Gymshark, I brought in two people. Um, Steve Hewitt and Paul Richardson. So Steve currently is the CEO and Paul is the chairman. And these people really helped mentor me and helped me to learn and understand. And, and you know, taught me to trust people as well, by the way. At this point, experience is very, very important. It's very difficult for someone that's never done it before to go off and do it without making a ton of mistakes that can inevitably slow you down. So if you can get experience and if you can get people in that have worked in a sizable business before or constantly ask for advice, then I think that's really, really important. I was very lucky and very fortunate. I've spoken a lot about gym charts sort of the stars aligning to get into where we are today. I happened to go into my local gym, happened to meet Paul at the local gym, who happened to introduce me to Steve, like all these stars had to align. So, but equally with that, I had to sort of be there for the opportunity to present themselves to me. So like I said, if you're making this decision, find people like that, like what Paul and Steve offered to me, um, who have experience in larger scale businesses. And you can have a look at sort of like, this is where we are now, this is where we want to be. And you have to draw out what that looks like for you. And like I said, be prepared to take that risk because inevitably it's a big risk, it's tough, it's stressful, and it's, um, yeah, it's incredibly hard work. But personally for me, it's gone incredibly well and I'm very happy with where we are today. Now, I know that a lot of this advice is very, very top line. I've tried to apply as many sort of real life examples from my experience as possible. I know it's incredibly hard. The one thing I would say is well, there is nothing wrong with having a great lifestyle business. And I think in 99 times out of 100, it makes a lot of sense. But equally, I understand that some people will, will want to take the same leap that we did at Gymshark and they will want to create a sort of a larger scale business. It is one of the most incredible and fulfilling things I have ever done in my life. And I cannot stress that enough. It's been incredibly hard. It's pushed me to my absolute limit. I found it physically tiring. I found it mentally draining. It is, like I said, it has pushed me to my absolute limit but I wouldn't have it any other way because I have learned so much and I'm so fortunate that I get to come into an office of incredibly talented people from all around the world every single day and I get to constantly work on improving myself.